afternoon, everybody. Todd Metalhead Weatherman here. Hope everyone is doing well. And all I have to say, really, is what a difference 48 hours makes. At one point, we were pretty much writing this thing off. But now, as you can see in the top right-hand corner here, we now have Tropical Storm Milton. Tropical Storm Milton literally formed right around noon today. We were writing this thing off at one point. It had a 30% chance of developing within the next seven days. I was really expecting later towards the week there might have been a better chance of development. I really think that a large part of that was going to be due to the frontal boundary that's been going through the southern U.S. now. If this ended up merging with it, it was going to have a lower chance to almost no chance of developing, which obviously is not the case. This has stayed separate. And this has actually been helped slightly by what was going on over here towards the eastern Pacific. There was a uh, tropical disturbance over here that was actually a full-on tropical depression. And some of its remnants made it out towards the Gulf of Mexico, where, of course, the waters are warm. Wind shear was going to be questionable. It still kind of is questionable, as you can see on satellite, that it is struggling just a little bit right now, some southern wind shear. But it's nothing that it can't overcome. It's in a relatively good environment still. But with this, of course... We're going to expect Milton to strengthen, and it actually, unfortunately, is expected to strengthen all the way up towards major hurricane status and going to almost certainly make an impact towards the Florida Peninsula here. The good news is we aren't expecting a direct landfall over towards the Big Bend at this time. Of course, we're still going to have to watch model trends from that point, but a lot of models, unfortunately, however, have been favoring the Tampa Bay region. This area is historically susceptible to storm surge. So we're going to have to be very, very watchful over the course of the next days. Uh, Tuesday is when we expect this to become a major hurricane and a landfall would be occurring right around the early afternoon hours of Wednesday. We will be looking to go live right around that time. That also is going to depend on my work schedule because this is kind of clashing with it slightly. But we're going to do the very best we can to get live coverage on this. So if I end up being late, I apologize in advance. But in any case, though, we're going to go ahead and go over some of the impacts that we have here. Of course, we're also going to talk about the other two storms out in the Atlantic and what that exactly could mean. And then, of course, we'll be looking at the environment beyond this point here. So for now, I think the biggest issue, and this is going to be a unique situation for the peninsula around here. And we're going to have a little feature that's out ahead of it, as you can see on satellite. And this is going to cause opportunities for enhanced rainfall well ahead of the system already you can see the clouds already over towards the peninsula so we're going to have a little low pressure feature around here that's going to be increasing the rainfall totals ahead of the storm and then the storm itself is going to roll in to go along with it so rainfall totals will be much higher than what's even being displayed on this forecast here we could already have several inches of rain long before we even get the landfall from milton at this point so very concerned about the flash flooding threat right now obviously since we're still a ways off from the storm impacting we only have a slight risk for flash flooding but i do anticipate that threat to increase maybe to a moderate or even a high risk at this point this is not me trying to scare anyone but i do want to make sure that you are well informed and well aware of the risk here another threat of course with any sort of landfalling tropical system is going to be the wind threat Right now, of course, with this expected to be a major hurricane, the wind probabilities, of course, even this early out are already going to be high for tropical storm force winds. We can see that we're at the very least already at the 50% threshold, if not higher. Some areas already getting to the 50 to 60% range. Expect this to increase. The timing of tropical storm force winds is also going to be a key factor. So really, I would say to anyone that is over here towards the peninsula, Big Bend, you have till really about 8 p.m. Tuesday to complete your preparations or complete your evacuations. I would expect evacuation orders to come in probably within the next day or so. So if you need to scrounge up supplies, either to leave or ride it out, even though I strongly advise against it, you have till really about, I would say, Tuesday evening at this point now so outside of that there's no current watches or warnings we have to get within that 48 hour time frame so expect those to be issued probably tomorrow evening at this point really just depends on the speed of this storm right now which is not incredibly fast at the moment we're seeing a forward motion at three miles an hour so plenty of time for this storm to strengthen and of course we'll be 
looking to see just what kind of strengthening trends we'll be having from this point as well here we'll go ahead and take a look at the spaghetti models for that here so as it stands right now also we're still looking at a minimal major hurricane still bad but currently at 115 miles an hour now as we look at spaghetti models here this is for our strength and intensity there are quite a few here that kind of bring it close if not reaching that category 4 threshold so we're going to have to be extra careful here as we continue to go forward here. Put it in perspective for you, minimal category 4 is 115 knots or 130 miles an hour. And I see at least two models right here that are pushing it. And then there's a third one here by the 84 hour mark that pushes towards it as well. So like I said, there is a chance that this exceeds the current expectation here. It's a very much liquid forecast at this point very malleable i would say and of course storm tracks like i said a lot of them are favoring the tampa bay area in particular so again if you're hearing me over here and you're in tampa bay time to start preparing now don't wait that being said let's go ahead and also take a look at our other two storms here we have we have two other hurricanes out in the atlantic we have Kirk, we have Leslie, and then we also have another area of interest we'll be watching with currently a 30% chance of development. The good news with both of these storms is that they're heading out to sea. The crazy thing with Kirk, however, is it ends up becoming extra tropical here, and this could be an impact for maybe France and the UK before all said and done here. So if you're over here in Europe and you're somehow watching me by chance, you need to be watchful of Kirk possibly as we go forward. Now, will it be a damaging major hurricane? No, but it will still be impacting the weather over there. It could be causing some dreary weather. There could even be some chances for severe weather before all is said and done. It's going to be pretty anomalous that we end up getting a tropical system all the way from the Atlantic over towards this region by this time of year. Especially with the waters being warm, like I said, we're not going to have, be having a fully tropical system at this point, but still a system nonetheless that will be causing a lot of problems with the weather in the days ahead here expect problems to occur by Wednesday afternoon of course this is in the Atlantic time zone here so not quite able to think off the top of my head when that will be a factor for you folks here but be on guard as far as Leslie is concerned I'm not too concerned with what she's going to be doing we're gonna see her begin to weaken by the time we get towards let's say two at Two in the afternoon on monday this will be downgraded to a tropical storm at this point the environment starts to become a little less favorable for it still may watch bermuda over here but this depends on if the storm is still holding together at this point which is pretty much unclear at this time i do think that this can hang on but i'm not super optimistic about it we'll go ahead and actually look at the spaghetti models with it but right now this is really the strongest that it's going to be it's still a category one hurricane it may hold out for a little bit here but we don't really see it going much further beyond where it is right now so i do anticipate this thing to potentially fall apart long before it becomes a threat to land here so that being said let's go ahead and take a look at the environment real quick before we get going here so this is the gfs ensemble here and we are currently looking at the wind shear the stronger the wind shear the more of a problem it actually is for tropical systems a little different from tornadoes to anyone that's new around here i mentioned this in almost every video that i talk about the tropics so here's milton here's kirk and here is leslie so all three of these storms are moving here wind shear is going to be a factor for why kirk ends up weakening as well but we're also going to see this thing really begin to race off here it's already moving at 20 miles an hour in forward speed and we i would anticipate this to probably start moving even faster than that maybe even double the speed before all is said and done if not even faster so here is Milton starting to intensify here. We see Leslie fade out pretty quickly as we get towards the 84 hour mark. And then as we continue to go forward here, the main development region in particular looks like it's still primed for potential development here. Really the question is gonna be more so drier than anything else. There is some wind shear, but not really enough to affect it heavily. So we're gonna see Milton clear the peninsula here and probably end up being torn apart 
afterwards so I don't expect any sort of secondary landfalls or anything of the like at that time here we did have an area that we were looking at over here towards the eastern Pacific with a 40% plus chance of development here. I don't expect any land impacts from that at this time, but we do have to keep watching towards this area here because this is generally how Milton ended up forming. So we have to be watchful of any other areas that sneak off any remnant pieces of tropical energy from the Pacific that sneak off into the Gulf here. And if they end up linking up with a frontal boundary or being on the edge of a frontal boundary, there's a chance that it could develop. As the weather pattern starts to get more active over towards the U.S., this might shut down the Gulf just a little bit here and decrease the chances of development here because the wind shear will be much stronger. But we'll have to see how things progress as we go throughout the middle and later part of the month here. We even start to see a little bit of an increase in wind shear over towards the main development region. So hopefully we start to see a bit more of a slowdown in our hurricane season here especially as we get towards the end of it. The end of the season is going to be at November 30th. But in the meantime, though, our three areas of interest in regards to our humidity, our, our ambient moisture towards the mid-levels of the atmosphere, Gulf is still very much moist, and that's a good environment for this storm here. GFS operational is showing a very strong storm at landfall here. 952, 951 millibar storm by landfall here. So that's essentially a major hurricane or right at the cusp of it at this current time. This model is due to be updated soon. So we may see this as a much stronger storm on the next run for GFS here. As we look over here, you can see Kirk and Leslie right here. And our next potential name storm to be following all three of these could be coming into play as well. Don't expect this to be a factor to land either. Expect this to probably head out to sea, even if it does get formed up here. Then we start to see that dry air begin to come back into the equation here towards the main development region here. There's still potential for other storm systems to come through, but I do think the main development region will start to be cut off here as we get towards the middle and later parts of the month here. You can also see over towards the Gulf that we're starting to see some dry air coming into play here towards the mid levels which will also help maybe slow down some of that tropical development. Of course, we're still looking 16 days in advance, so take that with a grain of salt. We're hoping that the back half of this run ends up being the uh, outcome here. So from that point, though, we, of course, have Kirk and Leslie we're looking at. We already know what Milton looks like it's going to be doing. We do have areas of interest over here towards the Caribbean yet again towards the end of this 10 day period that we're going to watch, but there's not a lot of ensembles that are really latching onto that just yet. But of course, it's something to keep an eye on nonetheless here. As far as Eastern Pacific is concerned right now, we don't have any remnant energy energy that's coming over towards the Yucatan from the West here. So some good news to be had there, but we still, of course, need to be watchful of the main development region. Everything right now that's over towards this region, of course, is being pushed out to sea, which is good news from that point, though. So right now, I'm not too, too concerned beyond Milton, but we still will be watching, of course, nonetheless. But at this point, we're in, I guess you could say we're in storm mode phase two here, I guess you would say. I'll get into the details as to what that is on a post at some point. But in any case, though, phase two is where we're going to be probably putting up the video every day for Milton as it draws closer to its landfall. So make sure you're staying tuned by hitting that subscribe button and getting that notification bell on. And I will see you guys in the next video tomorrow afternoon. Till then, take care and have an awesome rest of your day.